started i think we are going to start now i'm going to start it from now um jemi everyone thanks everyone for joining this wonderful event today my name is vijay i'm going to be one of the hosts for this event welcome jebim namo buddhai i am vaishali dufare from ambedkar mission toronto i will be the host of second half of the event today thank you we'll begin this event by acknowledging that we are meeting on aboriginal land that has been inhabited by indigenous people from the beginning as settlers we are grateful sorry as settlers we are grateful for opportunity to meet here and we thank all the generations of people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years long before today as we gather here there have been aboriginal people who have been the stewards of this place in particular we acknowledge the traditional territory of enishikwabe haron wetndat iroquois ojibwe chippewa people and home to metis this territory is covered by upper canada treaties we recognize and deeply appreciate their historic connection to this place we also recognize the contribution of metis inuit and other religious people have made both in shaping and streaming this community in particular and our province and country as a whole as settlers this recognition of the contributions and historic importance of indigenous people must also be clearly and overly connected to our collective commitment to make the promise and the challenges of truth and reconciliation real in our communities and in particular to bring justice for the murder and missing indigenous women and girls across our country in addition to this on this occasion we also acknowledge pule's birth anniversary on april 11th daltish month that falls in april month and our anti caste leaders who are born or passed away are created the milestones in this month i am sure we are all have been you know so excited for this month april month especially on you know april 14th which is which is baba sahab dr b r ambedkar's birth anniversary we all know that you know every year this month is festival for all of us we celebrate it with our families friends events and talks this is not the meetings this is uh, you know this is for the education and knowledge we gain in this month we pass it to the, our future generations about our histories stories and great legendary icons and anti caste crusaders today we are here to celebrate our great leader baba sahab dr b r ambedkar and his legacy now i would like to invite bante dr chandrakirti to recite trishana parshil dr uh, chandrakirti is a kanunar for buddha chair subarthi university mirat dr um, bante ji please okay thank you thank you very much so wish you all dr baba sambhed kar jayanti very great leader or great leader dr b r ambedkar so definitely we have to pay respect to dr b r ambedkar so first of all uh, i reciting a trishana pansila and uh, buddha vandana so so i request you all the hold your hand and then after you you have to follow नमो तगवत गच्छामि धम्मं शरणं गच्छामि 
Dhammang saranam gacchami Sanghang saranam gacchami Sanghang saranam gacchami Dutriyam te bodhang saranam gacchami Dutiyam pibudham saranam gachami Dutiyam pidhammam saranam gachami Dutiyam pisangham saranam gachami Dutiyam pisangham saranam gachami Dutiyam pibudham saranam gachami Dutiyam pibudham saranam Satyampisangamsaranamgachami <laughs> Gachami Tanati Pata Veramani Sukha Patam Samotiami Panati Pata Veramani Veramani Abadam Samotiami Adinna dana Veramani Sukha Padam Samotiami Adinamadamadi Musavada Viramani Sinapadam Tatiyami Musavada Viramani Sinapadam Tatiyami Musavada Viramani Sinapadam Tatiyami Sinapadam Tatiyami Sikha <laughs> Tasama se lang visodhaye ki Sadhu 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 Matasa Bhagavata Arhata Samma Sambudhasa Namatasa Bhagavata Arhata Sama Sambudasa Namatasa Bhagavata Arhata Sama Sambudasa Kitipisa Bhagavata Arhang Sama Sambudha Vidya Charana Sampana Sugata Laka Vidu Anotara Purisadhamma Sarati Tata Deva Manushana Buddha Bhagavati 
Thank you very much, too. I invite me for the chanting and three Sarantan Sila. Thank you very much to uh, organize this uh, program, uh, organized by Pain Canada. Thank you very much to all team. And thank you again. Thank you happy the Denti, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chandra Kitiji, for giving your time and doing this today for us. Thanks a lot. Now I invite Professor Arun Gautam to give his welcome remarks. Mr. Gautam is a president of Dr. Ambedkar International Mission, Toronto. Mr. Ambedkar, please. Thanks, Mr. Vijay Puliji and Vaishali Dupereji. Good morning. Bhanteji, distinguished speakers, dear Ambedkarites, Bahujan Mool Nivasi, human rights defenders, ladies and gentlemen. Jai Bheem, Jai Phule, Jai Birsa, Jai Fatima, Jai Periyar. My name is Arun Gautam from Ambedkar International Mission, Kanakurunto Register. On behalf of the Pan Canada Ambedkarite organizations, it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome everyone to this virtual celebration of 131st birth anniversary of Baba Sahib Ambedkar. We are honored to have Bhante Dr. Chandra Kittunji, convener Buddha Chua, Subharati University Mayor, for reciting Trisharan Panchil on the event. We welcome on behalf of the organizing committee, Dr. Mrs. Anul Amaurya, Vice Chancellor of J.R. Rajasthan, Sanskrit Institute, <coughs> daughter of Buddhist revolutionary leader, late Mr. B.P. Maurya, the keynote speaker on this event. We are grateful to Madam Apurva Srivastava Saiba, the Consul General in the Consulate General of India, Toronto, for giving her valuable time to speak at this event. We are also thankful to Dr. Y.S. Alone, Professor in JNU, New Delhi, for speaking on interrogating cultural sphere through Ambedkarian critical framework at this event. The event host, other colleagues will provide a more detailed introduction of keynote speaker and other two guest speakers. Our most sincere gratitude to the Pan Canada organizations, Dr. Ambedkar International Mission Canada, Toronto, International Mission Society, Calgary, Guru Ravidas Society, Calgary, Chetana Association of Canada, Vancouver, Ambedkar Rights International Coordination Society, Golden, Dhamma Waves, South Asian, Dalit Adivasi Network, Toronto, and Canadian Council of Indian Muslims, Toronto. A brief about Baba Sahib. Political democracy has no meaning without the economic and social democracy. Social democracy means a means of way of life which recognizes liberty, equality, and fraternity as the principles of life. His 26 January 1950, concluding his speech to the Constituent Assembly. Baba Sahib identified the problems of Bahujans brought in the limelight and provided the safeguards in the Constitution of India. He left behind a legacy of social 
religious and political organizations, a network of educational institutions, a revived Buddhist religion, and an ideology supported by prodigious literary output. He made original contributions of policy making, particularly those related to the reorganization of states, partition of India, water and power policy, labor policy, and economic policy. He was the author of the idea that the dispossessed would progress on the basis of claims to rights that were theirs by means of organizations that they and nobody else controlled. Ambedkar was the most helpless political statesman of India from the time of making of the constitution. Whatever provisions, contributions, other work he made, did he made, did by his wisdom, wise struggle and moments. Had he have the backing of an organized political power behind him, certainly he would have made provisions of proportionate share for the Shudras, OBCs, and Dalis, SCs, STs in the wealth, land ownership, industry, business, and institutions of India. The essence of democracy is representation, Dr. Ambedkar. He gave highest regard and priority to reasoning and scientific method. Read and know his 22 woes. In Ambedkarism, the elements of both reformation and enlightenment moments of Europe are present. Ambedkar is important because he researched old philosophies and traditions which were prevalent at Buddha's time and were against the Brahminic Vedanta and Advaitva. Buddha was influenced by these anti-Vedic, Prakativadi, realistic, dealing with a problem in a practical way, philosophies. Lokayat philosophy means famous among the people. Sankhya philosophy means vicharak, logicist, thinker, argumental. Both philosophies were opposed to Brahmanism and Adhyatvad and spiritualism of Hinduism. Lokayat philosophers were non-Brahmins and belonged to so-called lower caste. They had a scientific outlook, both believed and understanding nature by experience and scientific methods. They believed that you can understand laws of nature by your experience and observations and evidence. Lokayat and Sankhya philosophers did not believe in God, soul, and life after death. Baba Sahib integrated modern science with Buddha's teachings. Buddha said, don't follow anything because it is said by old seniors of our respected ones or written in the religious books or are coming from our traditions. You follow the things only if you find it true. No other propounder of religion gives so much freedom. He said, your decision is final. Buddha has this sermon, this preaching, Updesh two Kalams is known as the charter of freedom of the world. This Kalam Sutta attracted Baba Sahib towards the democratic and scientific ideals, equality, fraternity, and freedom of Buddhism. Only logic and rationality of Buddhism can counter the Brahmajal, Brahma myth illusion of Brahmanism and Manuva. Due to the differential treatment with the Bahujans on the basis of the caste, the struggle for human dignity will continue unless and until they are treated equally. Baba Sahib's revolution sought peacefully what bloody revolutions of England, America, France, and Russia sought through violence. A brief of Dr. Ambedkar International Mission Canada, Toronto, for those who are new on the event. Dr. Ambedkar International Mission Canada, Toronto has been working in the city of Toronto with and right organizations of India and other countries. It is active in a number of leading Asian and international fora on issues related to inclusion, discrimination, and human rights. The AIM Toronto installed the bust of Dr. Ambedkar in the Scott Library, York University, Toronto in 2015. It participated, has been associated or helping in global march against caste-based discrimination by ICDI in 2014, Washington, D.C. Global Conference on Defending Dalit Rights, the fight for establishing justice, dignity, humanity in 2015, Washington, D.C. by ICDR. 
125th birth anniversary celebrity of Dr. Ambedkar in the UNO first time in 2016 as Global Harmony Day in New York. BAMSAF World Conference on the Cash in India, the Threat of Humanity and Human Rights in 2017, Bernard College, Columbia University, New York, holding Dr. Ambedkar Memorial Lectures like in 2017 and in, in, in York University. Community Conversation, Dr. V. R. Ambedkar's Ideology, Philosophy and Teachings in 2018 in, in Kiel Campus, York University. The fifth International Conference on Unfinished Legacy of Dr. Ambedkar in 2019, Dalits in Global Context, Gene Thinking, Gender and Religion, 2019, the New School, India China Institute, New York. Organizing protests, marches, writing, and sending representations to Indian authorities on atrocities and other issues of Dalits and Bahujans. Representing writing letters to the Indian authorities to include caste as one of the discriminating factors to consider and grant refugee status to Dalits and to include Baba Sahib Ambedkar and Buddha in the Canadian syllabus from primary to the universities. Organizing seminars, speeches to spread the mission of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, to name a few only. Thank you, Jabim, Jabal, Jabharat, Jaikanada. Thank you, Arunji. Thanks a lot for these wonderful welcome remarks. We appreciate you for that. Now, uh, I would like to request Mr. Farooq Mazid, President of Canadian Council of Indian Muslims, to take the floor. Jay Beam, everyone. Uh, thanks to Pan Canada Ambedkar Organizations for uh, organizing such a beautiful event today on the, uh, to celebrate Baba, Baba Sahib Ambedkar's birth anniversary. Baba Sahib is not only fought for Dalit rights, he also fought for minority rights and women rights. He gave us the equality and social justice through the constitution of India. It's, hon it's my honor and pleasure to introduce our respected Indian Consulate General uh, in Toronto, Srimadhi Apurva Srinivastava. Srimadhi Apurva Srinivastava is a career diplomat having joined the Indian Foreign Service in 2001. Prior to being appointed at India's Consulate General in Toronto, she worked with Minister of External Affairs from January 2017 to August 2019. We really appreciate her dedicated service to the Indian diaspora living in the Toronto region. She always welcomes everyone with a smiling face and helps Indian diaspora in the, in the Toronto region. Without taking further due, I would like to welcome our respected Consular General of Toronto, Srimadhi Apurva Srinivasa. Uh, thank you. Uh, namaskar. First of all, thank you so much uh, for inviting me along with such eminent panelists to the special celebration of 131st birth anniversary of Bharat Ratan Baba Sahib Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar Ji, one of the greatest sons of India. I would like to commend uh, Ambedkarites in Canada for putting together this tribute. Thank you, Arun Gautam Ji. It's an indeed an honor for me to, you know, to be a part of this occasion. The life of Dr. Ambedkar was marked by great struggles, but he proved that every hurdle in life can be surmounted with talent and firm determination. Uh, Dr. Ambedkar was a great patriot with a clear vision of a united and strong India. He not only dedicated his life for ameliorating of conditions of deprived sections of the society, but his views on inclusiveness or samajik samrastha continues to inspire our national endeavors even today. Dr. Ambedkar always emphasized on dignity, unity, freedom and rights for all citizens, irrespective of their positions in the society. He was a crusader for gender equality and fought for equal rights for women in inheritance and marriage. India was privileged to have Dr. Ambedkar as the father of its constitution. He's one of the greatest defenders and philosophers of human rights. He's the architect of Indian constitution, his hard work in drafting the constitution and making it a powerful tool for social, political and economic empowerment is particularly praiseworthy. He ensured appropriate checks and balances in our democratic system with three wings of executive legislature and judiciary functioning independently, but accountable to one another. He was a true visionary 
contributing mm -hmm. to a global evolution of this idea, to the legal enshrinement of rights, and to this day, it continues to inspire human rights defenders. India is indeed, indeed fortunate to have had a leader with such a vision and acumen of Dr. Ambedkar, who had contributed immensely to what our country is today. On his 131st anniversary this year, let us pay tribute to Dr. Ambedkar for his untiring efforts to emancipate the un underprivileged for the robust transformation, transformational constitution and a strong democracy we have today and for a society based on justice and equality. Let us all take inspiration from his vision and values and resolve to imbibe his ideals in our life. As we celebrate the 131st birth anniversary of Baba, Baba Sam Ambedkar, it is our duty to continuously strive to emulate his vision and help empower our current and future generations to build a holistic, inclusive, and progressive society of modern India. Let, let me conclude here by congratulating all of you on this very special occasion. Let us rededicate ourselves to the service of the nation and help realizing the dreams and aspiration of Dr. Ambedkar. Thank you and Jai Hind. Thank you, Mrs. Apurva Srivastava for taking your time out of your busy schedule to be a guest speaker for today's event. Your presence and valuable notion will be helpful to us in a best possible way. You truly said we have to take the legacy of Baba Sahib forward and we will do our best to take it. Uh, now I invite Mr. Vijay Khobragade to introduce our second guest speaker, Professor y Dr. Y. S. Alun. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Jai Bhim yes. everyone. Uh, wish you all uh, 131st Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Jayanti to everyone. Uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Y. S. Alun today is our one of our uh, speaker. So, Professor Dr. Y.S. Alon, born 1963 at Chandrapur, Maharashtra, and studied BFA, Drawing and Painting from Nagpur, and MA Fine Arts, Faculty of Fine Arts, MS University, Baroda. He was awarded UGC Junior and Senior Research Fellowship in 1988 in the History of Arts. He obtained MPhil and PhD from Center for Historical Studies, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. Presently, he's working at School of Arts and Aesthetics, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi, from 8th March, 2007 onwards. Previously, he worked at Department of Archaeology, Deccan College Postgraduate Research Institute, Pune, and at Department of Fine Arts, Kurukshetra University, Kurukshetra. He has published several research papers in journals and chapters in edited volumes on ancient Indian art and critic of Walter Spring, Ajanta Caves and Buddhist Caves in Western India. Critic of modern Indian art, popular new Buddhist visual culture, the interpretive framework of Dr. Ambedkar and social sciences. He has curated exhibition as a point of departure to critic the idea of meta narrative of modernity as tracing the difference. His research interests include ancient Indian art, Buddhist art, modern Indian art, and popular visual culture. New Buddhist visual culture, philosophy, as well as general sciences. Professor Y. Salon presented the research papers at national and international art history and social sciences seminars, conferences at many places in India and abroad. He has lectured widely at many places in India and outside, outside India, mainly Germany, Spain, USA, China, and Sri Lanka. He was nominated as ICCR Chair Visiting Professor in Shenzhen University, China, and was invited as a short-term visiting professor at Renbin University, Beijing, China. Autonoma University, Madrid. Heidelberg University, Germany. East China Normal University, Shanghai, China. He has been engaged in popular lectures as a part of social movements. Professor Y. Salon also served as a member of various committees of government of India. His recently published book, Early Western Indian Buddhist Caves, Forms and Patronage, 
published by Kaveri Books, New Delhi, 2014, and reprinted 2019. He has evolved a critical conceptual formulation term as a protected ignorance and has lectured and published papers on it. Uh, we wish, uh, thank you, Professor Alun, for joining today's program. We welcome you on this, uh, uh, today's uh, birth celebration of Dr. Ravas Ambedkar. Thank you very much. Where shall I am done? Uh, Professor Alun. Yeah, I mean, should I start my lecture or the Madam Vice Chancellor will speak first? <laughs> no, you have to speak first. Okay, she will be thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. So, can can you tell me the time limit so that I can speak accordingly? So, we are expecting uh, thirty to forty minutes. Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, uh, thanks to uh, thanks for an invite and uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity to speak before the August audience here and uh, uh, wishing you all a very warm uh, Phule Ambedkar Jayanti uh, in the month of April. Uh, it's a very, very special month for all of us and those who are uh, residing in India as well as outside India. Uh, having said that, I just wish to uh, start with this whole idea that how there are there are two important people in uh, in colonial India who have been extremely extremely important. One was Mahatma Phule and second was Ayodhyas, and they were instrumental in initiating a very different kind of a discourse, a cultural discourse, and. And then in 20th century, it, it was taken up by Dr. Ambedkar and it moved further. And how one really can make use of the Ambedkarian thinking in order to interrogate the cultural sphere uh, today, uh, be it is in America, be it is in Europe, be it is in Canada, be it is in South America, be it is in India, or be it is in outside India, anywhere uh, in the world. Uh, there are two important things. One is that, uh, as was said by Dr. Ambedkar, especially in his Annihilation of Caste, uh, where he, he notes that, uh, like, rules are practical. I mean, there, there's a, there, is a, there, there is a critical framework he introduces that is rules, uh, print, rules and principles. So he says that rules are practical. They are habitual ways of doing things according to prescription. But principles are intellectual. They are useful methods of judging things. Rules seek to tell an, an agent just what course of action to pursue. Principles do not prescribe a specific course of action. And this is what he wrote in Annihilation of Caste long ago. And this becomes a very important critical framework in order to unpack the phenomenon or the ways in which we understand the phenomenon in the present day context. Similarly, there is another statement which he had made way back in 1950, where he said that uh, on 26 January 1950, we are going to enter into a life of contradictions. In politics, we, are, we will have equality and in social and economic life, we will have inequality. In politics, we will be recognizing the principle of one man, one vote, and one vote, one value. In our social and economic life, we shall, by reason of our social and economic structure, continue to deny the principle of one man, one value. And this is exactly the contradiction uh, which even still we are trying to resolve, we are trying to understand, and we are trying to bridge this gap. But the question here is that, how do you understand the cultural sphere that is being practiced everywhere in the country, especially in India? And then how that cultural sphere also get transformed, transferred to overseas? This is, this, these are very dual factors. They are not separate ones. They are codependent. They are interdependent. And they, they are very specific to the values that are being nurtured over a period of time. 
Dr. Ambedkar was the was the uh, in 20th century India. He was the first one to present the critique of the imperial discourses, the imperial uh, un understanding of the caste and culture, the Brahminical understanding of culture, the 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 the, 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 the Marxist understanding of, of of culture. So he differs all of them, and then he makes a very I mean, takes a very non-Brahmanic position, and in this non-Brahmanic position, he chooses the Buddhist logic of Pratyasamudpad. Because when you see uh, what he wrote in Annihilation of Caste and what he says in 1955, there is a great connect, and this connect one has to understand. But apart from understanding this kind of a, a connection, how do we really analyze the whole aspect of? The cultural sphere that is that is being governed today. Today, everybody talks about Ambedkar being uh, Baba Sahib being being a great ar a, a architect of Indian constitution, the, the the great intelligent man, and everything so on and so forth. But the question over here is that how the narrative is made and how that particular narrative is constantly inscribed in the public sphere one has to understand <clears throat> how the cultural sphere governs in india the first and foremost important thing is that the cultural sphere in india is governed by a dominant forces or the hegemonic forces of brahmanism and their their, their perceptions are so much governed by the brahmanical values and also the uh, uh, the, uh, the, the the normatives that are being practiced and the the presuppositions that are embedded in nature. So these presuppositions which are embedded in nature are the are, are, are the stumbling block for all of us to create an enabling process. And this enabling process, this 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 enabling process, uh, uh, has to be has to, has to be understood in a multiple context in a multiple ways. Now, when when we when we really talk about the cultural phenomena, then how do we understand this entire cultural phenomena? There is this ingrained hate, anger, and violence, which is being practiced in the society, and this ingrained hate, anger, and violence comes with certain ideological. Uh, uh, propagations and these ideological propagations are completely antithetical to the ethos which is they which exist in the Indian constitution and the philosophy of Dr. Ambedkar. How do we understand then? What are the what are what are our achievements as a as as a uh, uh, as as a part of the nation or as a part of the uh, international community? What, what I have observed over a period of time is that India is a fantastic labor supply country. I mean, for, for everyone, like you have a fantastic labors that, that are being trained, whether it is doctor, whether it is engineer, whether it is academician, whether it is Safai Karmachari, whether it is a simple uh, uh, labor in the, uh, in, 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 the, uh, uh, in the field or anywhere. So India has become a fantastic labor supply country in the entire world. It's not just Canada, it's not just US, it's not just Europe, but everywhere you will find that there is a this labor force. And we have achieved that kind of a status of being a fantastic labor supply country. The second achievement which India has done and which is completely antithetical to Dr. Ambedkar is the Mithyavadi Sanskriti, that is culture of mythic. The culture of mythic is so much paramount and so the, 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 the minds of the Indians are so much ghettoized that the whole lot of, I mean, the claims to be modern, the claims to be educated one, the claims to be scientific rationality, the claims to be humanitarian uh, uh, ways of thinking and, uh, uh, and, and functioning completely falls apart. We may, as a part of the government mechanisms, as a part of the government institutions, as a part of protecting the constitutional means, the 
the the the, the very responsibility of bringing cultural change is very important in and and that and that the academic education completely failed to create any kind of enabling process to change the culture of hate anger violence the lynching and all other other uh, other things that are that are being practiced by by many people having said that i would also like to uh, would like to submit that the the uh, this 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 culture of mythic is so much so much uh, has has always maintain maintain many normatives in the functioning of mind and the indians somehow have not been able to kill that normative the ambedkarites have have been managed to kill these normatives and move ahead in the life make a thinking which is very different which is democratic which is for equality the ambedkarian pro thinking process is all about creating the enabling process which believes in the idea of liberty equality fraternity and karuna and without karuna you cannot have fraternity as simple as this and this has been very beautifully analyzed by dr ambedkar himself and and without fraternity you cannot have equality and liberty these are these are very fundamental to uh, to understand but the mithyavadi sanskruti which is being practiced which is being nurtured which is being revived all the time does not empower the citizen of republic of government of india to be rational and to realize the constitutional ethos which is to be practiced which is to be uh, made 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 as a as a Uh, as 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 a social political and cultural reality and therefore one has to see how public sphere gets governed the public sphere gets so much governed by these ghettoized ideas that say for example ambedkar is always narrated as as anti national or something like a stooge of a british or something like you know keval dalito ke leader the or something like just leader of scheduled caste that's it this is how the narration is made and this narration has completely ghettoized the minds of the people the minds of the public at large and even outside india the 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 the, the gandhian sensibility and syndrome is so enormous that even the educated lot would not like to understand and interrogate the internal contradictions that exist within the gandhian syndrome because 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 see one has to see it very clearly likes of gandhi likes of tagore likes of vivekanand likes of um, uh, uh, arvind ghosh likes of radhakrishnan they are all vedantics baba saheb was never vedantic these people are vedantics and the vedantics have not created the structure of equality it's as simple as this it is the non brahmanic philosophies which has created structures of equality it is non brahmanic philosophies that have created a different social sphere and this particular social sphere gets so much ghettoized by putting people in a perennial uh, protected ignorance how do we understand protected ignorance i mean i i'll just give you one small example that a professor of physics gets up in the morning and pours water to sun this is a fantastic example of protected ignorance i mean he knows that the water will never reach to sun but even then he will make i mean he will make this ritual he will he will follow this thing so that clearly shows how protected ignorance plays an important role in every walks of life that is just one example the second example would i which i would like to which i would like to quote that during the time of covid in order to fight covid the the leader of the country advises people or advocates people that they should bang uh, they should clap and bang talis and talis and all those things, uh, the talis and all the plates and or, or talis and all those things and the entire educate so called educated section of the society started clapping and banging thalis in india 
these are all the example of protected ignorance which are completely antithetical to what dr ambedkar has subscribed and this is what exactly also gets exported outside india so the mithyavadi sanskruti is so much uh, um, uh, um, uh, so much overpowers the rational thinking of the people of the or, or, or for that matter the mindset of people that it does not wish to interrogate the the, the self all the time or that their ritual practices their belief systems are problems and are obstacle to become a just society or for that matter to become a scientific society or for that matter to become a better society or a humanistic society when i say humanistic society the cultural sphere of hate anger violence and desire is so is, is being practiced in in every walks of life and it is being propelled all the time and and therefore like when when people uh, people people tell uh, uh, say that rationality is always relative and i i i certainly admit that rationality is always relative but that that depends on the objectives no doubt rationality is relative but that 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 depends on the objectives if the objective of rationality is to ward off ignorances it becomes a righteous rationality and if the objective of rationality is not to ward off ignorances then it becomes unrighteous rationality and therefore it becomes protected ignorance so the entire knowledge production process needs to be interrogated whether it is creating any enabling process or not and is it is it making us a human these are very fundamental in order to change the public sphere the public sphere in india is so much ghettoized that it is so much there, there is so much violence in the public sphere there is an epistemic violence there is a physical violence there is a mental violence the the the, the society has become a perverted society a sick society a mentally sick society what is happening is that the uh, as as dr dr ambedkar had said that uh, varna is a perversion and that is why i say that caste is a psychotic perversion so the psychotic perversions are being practiced and being maintained all the time in the minds of the indians so much so that it does not want to inter see that these are the stumbling blocks or these are the problems in order to create a fraternity and karuna in the society these these this this kind of a cultural sphere is also getting opposed by uh, uh, by, by the ambedkarian thinking today and and therefore i have always maintained that like it is a question which when when people talk about creating or or the so called intellectuals in india i i i i question that what the, the claimed intellectuals in india have not produced a critic of a self i have not seen they are producing critic of a self and critic of a self is possible when you become non self your normative and presuppositions are so much governing your everyday thinking that you cannot think or you cannot come out of it and present a critic of a self you cannot become a non self as simple as this and and therefore you cannot see the problems within yourself so this this seeing within is a very important process which also aimed at creating an enabling process and this enabling process of cultural sphere has a tacit connection with the 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 the, the, the samyakness or the justness or the righteousness in every sphere of life be it is cultural be it is social be it is creative be it is any kind of writing any kind of a work so on and and so and and, and so forth the the uh, the the other sphere which is very important to dis- discuss is the uh, what in marathi we call it as vitambanavadi sanskruti or 
in in hindi probably it may be vidambanavadi sanskruti and 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 in in english it is culture of defamation so the culture of defamation is so much uh, uh, hovering on the minds of people that you torment anyone physically mentally you i mean the 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 the, the right to uh, uh, you know that 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 a person considers his right over the others these are these are all the perversions and these are all the uh, part of the culture the 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 vitam the vitambanavadi sanskruti all the all the culture of defamation and this culture of defamation has has been ruling and is being is is being constantly protected by the respective political dispensations dispensations all the time and therefore the 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 real change which we all envisage or for that matter the the every citizen of republic of government of india has a responsibility or 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 is supposed to carry out the responsibility to change others to change himself or herself and also change others does not exist in the larger mindset of the public the 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 ways in which baba saheb's image is inscribed in public sphere is is i mean if you study that 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 element of hate and anger is very constant is so much embedded in every walks of life whether it is a school curricula curricula whether it is a university curricula or even for that matter the general understand and these are fundamental problems the the uh, uh, as and when any ambedkar right uh, brings out the contradictions in 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 gandian thinking or in the gandian ways of doing things uh, people get get hurt or people fi- find it very offensive why it why that offensiveness comes in the minds of the indians including the diasporic indians precisely because The, di- the 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 indians or by and large anybody who even including diasporic indians many of those were diasporic indians have not been able to really come out of their normative thinking their normative thinking is that of the greatness of 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 gandhian thinking and fail to see any contradictions or even the feminist would not like to present a critic of gandhi or anybody for that matter but would like to see those personas who have been anti women all the time and they are the one these are the anti women personas that are being constantly propagated in the uh, in the cultural sphere and therefore this cultural sphere gets so much ghettoized that the the uh, uh, the, the the change which we expect or what what we 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 uh, we say that the Uh, that 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 uh, how do we really see this this kind of changes and 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 how do we really bring out those changes? You see, one 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 of the fine example I just give you when Mulkaraj Anand met uh, Dr. Ambedkar on Cuff Parade, and this has been written by Mulkaraj Anand himself and not uh, um, not by any biographer of uh, of, uh, of Dr. Ambedkar. Uh, uh like mulkaraj anand come i mean was waiting for dr ambedkar and 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 uh, uh, dr ambedkar came uh, comes out of of his car car and uh, mulkaraj anand says namaste and dr ambedkar says om mani padme hum so 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 three the greetings and then mulkaraj anand immediately says yes namaste means uh, means uh, i bow before you and uh, baba sahib says well om mani padme hum is a prayer for enlightenment and 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 then mulkaraj anand says how i we absorb mindlessly all those things so that that shows how dr ambedkar was critical even in choosing certain salutations certain words in the public life in the public sphere and this kind of a public sphere somehow does not 
go into the i mean this kind of a critical criticality or developing any kind of a critical criticality of the public sphere does not enter by and large precisely because the normatives of the indians and the presuppositions of the indians does not get dismantled at all people talk about post modernism and all those things are where is the modern i mean the society itself is not modern yet forget about post modern and even for that matter we have we as like like every every it, at at every level you have the mithyavadi sanskruti at in every corner you have the vitambanavadi sanskruti at every level you have the hegemonic thinking and the the the, the hegemony of violence the performance of violence becomes an act of heroicness so what is heroicness so heroicness lies in the in mindset of the caste hindus to torment the life of the downtrodden or to kill the downtrodden or rape the downtrodden uh, be it is scheduled caste be it is uh, scheduled tribes and so on and so forth so these are all the outcomes of the mithyavadi sanskruti and the vitambanavadi and these are basically cultural problems and unless until we address these cultural problems i don't think we can become a livable society a good society what dr ambedkar had envisaged or what even the constitution makers had uh, uh, had 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 envisaged while making of the constitution and then the uh, the nature of the political understanding as well as the uh, cultural understanding the cultural understanding is that of the brahmanical cultural nationalism the revivalist movement in india has created the brahmanical cultural nationalism and that brahmanical cultural nationalism are still being practiced in every walks of life and this this brahmanical cultural nationalism was first critique by dr ambedkar and how do we see the constructive critique of this brahmanical cultural nationalism and at the same time how do we counter this brahmanical cultural nationalism the word samarasta is being used by 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 certain political dispensations all the time or even for that matter the train was renamed between havda between mumbai and havda as uh, samarasta express what is this samarasta there is a difference between samarasta and equality samanta there is a great degree of difference samarasta does not does not uh, um, uh, um, provide any kind of an equality it is not aimed at equality samarasta is a status quoist the vedantics have been status quoist the mithyavadi sanskruti has been status quoist the vitambana vadi sanskruti has been a violent one and 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 they the, uh, they will talk about samarasta but what that samarasta means uh, uh, for, for what and therefore the functioning of mind and the functioning of cultural sphere needs to be interrogated from this ambedkarian lens from the ambedkarian perspective at the same time the one one also has to understand that the word nibbana means cessation of hate anger violence and desire whereas the word nirvana which which comes from nibbana which is there in the uh, in the uh, vedantic philosophy uh, 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 means means salvation of soul so there is a degree of difference and how do we understand this whole logic of caste hinduness in the cultural sphere the logic of caste hinduness in the cultural sphere is that of hate anger and violence and as long as we do not shed this hate anger and violence we will not become a proud society we will not become a livable society dr apetkar has given this 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 message very clearly that you have to understand you have to inculcate karuna and it is through karuna you develop fraternity it is through karuna you develop respect for others it is through karuna you develop respect for equality it is through karuna you develop this whole issue of uh, uh, respect for 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 individual liberty and without 
without karuna you cannot have fraternity and without fraternity you cannot have liberty and equality this is a very candid message dr ambedkar has given and that is the reason you will observe that he was the first one to present a critique of french revolution and the russian revolution he said it very clearly that the russian revolution was all for equality it bypasses liberty whereas the french revolution was all for liberty and bypasses equality and he said in order to achieve the the liberty and equality you have to you 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 have to have a karuna and without karuna you cannot have fraternity it, and and without fraternity you cannot have the equality and liberty so everything is codependent everything is interdependent this is how baba said use this buddhist logic and and therefore he this whole idea of impermanence is so much uh uh, uh, uh uh there in uh, in, in doc sorry uh, in dr ambedkar's thinking and, uh, and and writing and and there are there are number of things uh, um, uh num- one can go on speaking number of things and, and and there are number of artists these days who are inspired by ambedkarian thing and creating a fabulous fabulous Uh, visual culture, fabulous uh, paintings, artworks, and so on and so forth. They all are from all walks of life, not just one strata of society, not from just one one re- set of religion, uh, set of religion. But they are they are all multiple, and they they there is a realization of constitutional ethos. It is this constitutional ethos which will always creating an enabling process, a just society, a livable society, a A, a peaceful society, and moreover, a, uh, uh, the non-violent society. So the so the so the so the violent nature of society is because we have mithyavad or the culture of mythic and vitambanavad or the culture of defamation. And in order to 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 come out of this, we have to understand that we will have to shed all our normatives. all over is all over inhibitions all our uh, uh, presuppositions and 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 let let our the 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 normatives and presuppositions not govern us be it is in india be it is outside india be it is anywhere uh, anywhere in the world uh, i suppose i think i have taken my time so i close here thank you very much and uh, uh, i'm sorry I, i i thought i would make a ppt presentation but then i decided not to do that and just speak uh, verbally uh, with, with all of you thank you very much jaybi thank Wonderful. you professor thank you professor alon for gracing the event with your highly stimulating and insightful speech on cultural sphere it was an eye opener truly said karuna is needed for fraternity and i'm sure one day our constitutional ethos will be followed protective ignorance will be gone the examples were classic and the cultural spheres of hate violence and anger will go and we will be able to live in a livable society that dr baba saheb ambedkar had envisioned for us thank you for your time now i uh, invite mr major mal to introduce our keynote speaker professor dr anula morya thank you mr mal uh, you are muted sir i got it yes. thank you for sharing it and uh, ladies and gentlemen uh jab beam it gives me a great pleasure and honor in introducing our keynote speaker professor dr anula morya on baba saheb's baba saheb dr ambedkar's 131st birth anniversary professor dr anula morya's academic qualifications are phd llb from merut university ma and ba honors in, in sanskrit from dual from university of delhi Dr Morya is currently serving as a vice chancellor of uh, Rajasthan Sanskrit University Jaipur first female vice chancellor of Sanskrit University 
She's working in the field of education and women empowerment. Before taking over the office of vice chancellor, she had served as a principal of Kilindi College, University of Delhi from 2009 to 2019. Also associate and assistant professor at Dr. B.R. Pimrao Ambedkar College, University of Delhi for more than 16 years. During her tenure of principal at Kalendi College, she initiated various developmental activities for the improvement of academic standards, extracurricular activities, and infrastructure upgrade of the college. Dr. Maria have been acknowledged by Venkateya Nadu, former Minister of Urban Development, Housing, and Urban Poverty Alleviation, Government of India, and Professor Captain Singh Solanki, former governor of Haryana and Punjab. The governing body of Kalandi College acknowledged her continual endeavor in the development of the college. <clears throat> uh, under Dr. Maurya's leadership, Rajasthan Sanskrit University, Jaipur, received the certificate of achievement of institution with innovative structure and learning environment. Dr. Moria has been uh, confirmed with many coveted awards such as Golden AIM Award, Most Dedicated Vice Chancellor Award, International Extraordinary Women Award 2020 at Geneva, Switzerland, Iron Lady Samrasta Award, Gold Medal, Global Leader Award, etc. Dr. Moria has authored four books, 18 research articles, published 25 research papers presented in seminar, conferences, and symposia. Uh, she has held 37 academic positions, expert in 12 committees, a recipient of around 38 awards of national and international level. Please join me in welcoming Professor Dr. Anula Moria to this event to deliver her speech. Thank you. जय भीम नमो बुद्धाय बाबा साहब डॉक्टर अम्बेडकर की 131वीं जयंती के अवसर पर उन्हें श्रद्धांजलि एवं नमन करते हुए द पैन कनाडा अम्बेडकरइट ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस के द्वारा आयोजित कार्यक्रम में मुझे कीनोट स्पीकर के बतौर आमंत्रित करने के लिए और नारी उत्थान में डॉक्टर अम्बेडकर की भूमिका पर अपनी बात रखने के लिए तहे दिल से धन्यवाद देती हूं विशेष रूप से प्रोफेसर अरुण गौतम जी का भी धन्यवाद देती हूं कि उन्होंने मुझे इस महत्वपूर्ण कार्यक्रम के लिए आमंत्रित किया डॉक्टर अंबेडकर के व्यक्तित्व के अनेक पहलू थे वे शिक्षा शास्त्री अर्थशास्त्री राजनीति शास्त्री लेखक प्राध्यापक विधिवेता विधि निर्माता सार्वजनिक नेता समाज सुधारक प्रशासक और संगठन करता थे इसलिए वे सही मायनों में आधुनिक भारत के राष्ट्र निर्माता थे बाबा साहब अंबेडकर ने जितनी तल्लीनता से दलित उद्धार का उत्कृष्ट आंदोलन चलाया उतनी ही तल्लीनता के साथ भारत की आदि जनसंख्या अर्थात स्त्री उद्धारक के रूप में भी अपनी भूमिका निभाई दलितों के पश्चात वे हिंदू नारी को ही सर्वाधिक अपेक्षित अपमानित तथा प्रताड़ित जन समझते थे उसके लिए कार्यों की कोई कमी नहीं और अधिकारों का कोई नामो निशान न था इसलिए अंबेडकर को दलित मसीहा के साथ साथ स्त्री मसीहा की उपमा देना गलत नहीं होगा आर्टिकल 14, 15 एवं 16 के माध्यम से संविधान में लिंग के आधार पर स्त्री पुरुष के बीच भेदभाव समाप्त करते हुए दोनों को समान दर्जा प्रदान करवाया बाबा साहब ने संविधान में लिखा है कि किसी भी महिला को सिर्फ महिला होने की वजह से किसी अवसर से वंचित नहीं रखा जाएगा और ना ही इसके साथ लिंग के आधार पर कोई भेदभाव किया जा सकता है ये गंभीर मुद्दा है कि स्वतंत्रता के पिछहत्तर वर्ष पश्चात भी डॉक्टर अंबेडकर के व्यापक महिलावादी दृष्टिकोण को पर्याप्त महत्व नहीं मिल पाया है जबकि ना, आज नारी स्वतंत्रता की जितनी बातें की जाती हैं, 
उसकी नींव अंबेडकर के विचार ही हैं नारी चाहे किसी भी वर्ग की हो बाबा साहब के इस ऋण से जन्म से मृत्यु तक ऋण नहीं हो सकती बाबा साहब स्त्रियों को वे समस्त अधिकार देने के पक्ष में थे जो पुरुषों को प्राप्त है नारियों की उन्नति एवं उनके संगठित होने में अंबेडकर गहन विश्वास रखते थे प्रश्न ये है कि वे कौन सी परिस्थितियां रही जिन्होंने अंबेडकर को स्त्री चिंतन हेतु प्रेरित किया इसके लिए अंबेडकर ने पूर्व प्रचलित बुद्ध कौटल्य एवं मनु नारी संबंधित दृष्टिकोणों को में भी व्यापक और तार्किक परिवर्तन किया वैदिक बुद्ध और कौटल्य कालीन अध्ययन कर अंबेडकर ने पाया कि तीनों काल में राजनीति को छोड़ दें तो बौद्धिक एवं सामाजिक क्षेत्र में निसंदेह ही स्त्री बेहतर स्थिति में थी किंतु कालांतर में मनु के आगमन से उसकी स्थिति देनी होती चली गई जिसको लेकर अंबेडकर बेहद चिंतित थे बुद्ध से पूर्व वैदिक काल का उल्लेख करना यहाँ पर अनिवार्य है अर्थवेद के तहत ब्रह्मचर्य काल पूरा करने के उपरांत कन्या विवाह के योग्य मानना इस बात की पुष्टि करता है कि सम, उस समय भी नारी उपनयन की अधिकारी थी नारी वेदों का मंत्र पाठ करती थी वे वेदा अध्ययन भी करती थी नारी गुरुकुल में अध्यापक के रूप में भी कार्य करती थी वैदिक बुद्ध व कौटल्य कालीन ग्रंथों का अध्ययन कर अंबेडकर ने पाया कि तीनों ही काल में बौद्धिक व सामाजिक क्षेत्र में निसंदेह ही स्त्री बेहतर स्थिति में थी किंतु कालांतर में मनु के आगमन से उसकी स्थिति देनी होती चली गई जिसे लेकर अंबेडकर बेहद ही चिंतित थे अंबेडकर ने धार्मिक अंधविश्वास और धर्म शास्त्रों पर आधारित भारतीय समाज में स्त्रियों की दशा का गहनता से वैज्ञानिक विश्लेषण कर तत्कालीन समय में चल रहे समाज सुधार आंदोलन से आगे बढ़कर स्त्रियों को अधिकार वापस दिलाने हेतु ठोस प्रयास किए वे स्त्रियों के प्रति संकुचित विचारों को प्रकाश में लेकर आए और समस्त स्पष्ट किया कि मनुस्मृति सामाजिक आर्थिक असमानता पर आधारित है इसलिए उन्होंने इसे ध्वस्त करने का आह्वान करते हुए नारी समाज को सम्मान से जीने के लिए प्रेरित किया अंबेडकर को आभास था कि शिक्षा ही वह ताकत है जो सभी बेड़ियों को काट सकती है किसी भी देश अथवा समुदाय की वास्तविक प्रगति के लिए यह आवश्यक है कि उनके सभी नागरिक शिक्षित हों नारी मुक्ति के वाहक डॉक्टर अंबेडकर ने स्वतंत्रता समानता तथा स्वाभिमान से जीवन जीने की शिक्षा देते हुए दो मूल मंत्र दिए शिक्षित बनो संगठित रहो और संघर्ष करो अप दीपो भव अर्थात अपने दीपक स्वयं बनो उन्होंने प्रश्न उठाया कि ज्ञान और विद्या पर केवल पुरुषों का ही एकाधिकार क्यों है जबकि घर में एक पुरुष पढ़ता है तो केवल वही पढ़ता है और यदि घर में स्त्री पढ़ती है तो पूरा परिवार पढ़ता है चार अगस्त 1913 में न्यूयॉर्क में अध्ययन के दौरान अंबेडकर ने कहा हमें कर्म सिद्धांत त्याग देना चाहिए ये गलत है कि माँ बाप बच्चों को जन्म देते हैं कर्म नहीं देते माँ बाप बच्चों के जीवन को उचित मोड़ दे सकते हैं ये बात अपने मन में अंकित कर यदि हम लोग अपने लड़कों के साथ साथ लड़कियों को भी शिक्षित करें हमारे समाज की उन्नति तीव्र होगी शिक्षित होकर ही महिलाएं अपने अधिकारों के प्रति सशक्त होंगी वर्तमान में नारी शिक्षा की स्थिति ये है कि स्वतंत्रता के सात दशक बाद भी अनेक योजनाएं परि योजनाएं और प्रयासों के बावजूद देश की पिछहत्तर प्रतिशत महिलाएं अभी भी अशिक्षित हैं वे अक्षर ज्ञान से वंचित हैं तथा देश के आधे हिस्से में पंद्रह प्रतिशत महिलाएं ही शिक्षित हैं इसके अतिरिक्त वे लड़की लड़कियों की सह शिक्षा के भी प्रबल समर्थक रहे हैं बाबा साहब किंतु कंठरपंथियों के विरोध के फलस्वरूप उनका यह सपना साकार ना हो सका बाल विवाह का विरोध करते हुए उचित उम्र में महिलाओं के विवाह का अंबेडकर ने पुरजोर विरोध किया उन्होंने माना कि शादी एक जिम्मेदारी है इसलिए माता पिता को अपने बच्चों पर इसे थोपना नहीं चाहिए 
जब तक वे आर्थिक रूप से शादी से उत्पन्न होने वाली जिम्मेदारी को संभालने योग्य ना हो जाए विवाह जैसे मुद्दे पर भावी जीवन साथी के चयन में लैंगिक असमानता को दूर करते हुए पुरुषों के समान महिलाओं के अधिकारों की बाबा साहब ने वकालत की उन्होंने कहा पत्नी कैसी होनी चाहिए इस बारे में पुरुषों का विचार जाना जाता है वैसे ही पति कैसा हो इस बारे में पत्नी का मत जान लेना भी जरूरी है स्त्री जब भी व्यक्ति है स्त्री भी एक व्यक्ति है और उसे भी व्यक्तिक स्वतंत्रता होनी चाहिए डॉक्टर अंबेडकर के क्रांतिकारी कदम का परिणाम ही है कि लगातार इसके बाद महिला श्रमिकों के लिए लाभकारी कानून बनने लगे आज महिला श्रमिकों को उद्योग में ही नहीं सरकारी सेवाओं में भी मातृत्व लाभ संबंधी मेटर्निटी लीव जिसको बोलते हैं अनेकानेक सुविधाएं दी जा रही हैं भारतीय समाज में नारी की उपेक्षित और देनी स्थिति में सुधार कर उन्हें समाज में पुनः प्रतिष्ठित करने हेतु स्वतंत्रता उपरांत कानून मंत्री का पद ग्रहण करते ही ज्यादा समय न लेते हुए अंबेडकर हिंदू कोर्ट बिल को साकार रूप देने में पूरी तरह जुट गए पांच फरवरी 1951 को डॉक्टर भीमराव अंबेडकर ने संसद में हिंदू कोर्ट बिल पेश किया इसका मकसद हिंदू महिलाओं को सामाजिक शोषण से आजाद कराना और पुरुषों के बराबर अधिकार दिलाना था महिला सशक्तिकरण की दिशा में इस ऐतिहासिक कदम से आज शायद बहुत कम लड़कियां परिचित होंगी उन सभी को ये जानने समझने की जरूरत है कि इसी बिल में महिला सशक्तिकरण की असली व्याख्या है हिंदू कोर्ट बिल के जरिए उन्होंने संवैधानिक स्तर से महिला हितों की रक्षा का प्रयास किया इस बिल के मुख्यतः चार अंग थे हिंदुओं में बहु विवाह की प्रथा को समाप्त करके केवल एक विवाह का प्रावधान जो विधि सम्मत हो महिलाओं को संपत्ति में अधिकार देना और गोद लेने का अधिकार देना पुरुषों के समान नारियों को भी तलाक का अधिकार देना हिंदू समाज में पहले पुरुष ही तलाक दे सकते थे आधुनिक और प्रगतिशील विचारधारा के अनुरूप हिंदू समाज को एकीकृत करके उसे मजबूत करना बाबा साहब के लिए हिंदू कोर्ट बिल संसद में पास कराना आसान नहीं था जैसे ही इसे सदन में सदन में पेश किया गया सदन के अंदर और बाहर विरोध के स्वर गूंजने लगे सनातन हिंदुओं से लेकर आर्य समाजी तक अंबेडकर के विरोधी हो गए संसद के अंदर भी काफी विरोध हुआ 26 सितंबर 1951 को जवाहरलाल नेहरू जी ने घोषणा की कि बिल इस सदन से पास नहीं किया जाएगा इस बिल के पास ना होने पर बाबा साहब को जैसे पुत्र का निधन होता है जैसे दुख होता है इसी प्रकार बाबा साहब को भी वैसा ही दुख हुआ 27 सितंबर 1951 को बाबा साहब ने मंत्री पद से इस्तीफा दे दिया मकसद पूरा ना होने पर सत्ता से छोड़ देना निस्वार्थ समाज सेवी की पहचान है ये बाबा साहब जैसे लोग ही कर सकते हैं बाबा साहब के इस्तीफे के बाद देश भर में हिंदू कोर्ट बिल के पक्ष में बड़ी प्रतिक्रिया हुई खास तौर से महिला संगठनों द्वारा विदेशों में भी इसकी प्रतिक्रिया हुई कुछ साल बाद 1955 से छप्पन हिंदू कोर्ट बिल के अधिकांश प्रावधानों को निम्न भागों में संसद में पारित किया गया हिंदू विवाह अधिनियम हिंदू तलाक अधिनियम हिंदू उत्तराधिकारी अधिनियम हिंदू दत्तक ग्रहण अधिनियम लेकिन डॉक्टर अंबेडकर का सपना सन 2005 में साकार हुआ जब संयुक्त हिंदू परिवार में पुत्री को भी पुत्र के समान कानूनी रूप से बराबर का भागीदार माना गया महिलाओं को आर्थिक रूप से आत्मनिर्भर बनाने में डॉक्टर अंबेडकर ने बहुत सराहनीय काम किया है डॉक्टर भीमराव अंबेडकर द्वारा महिलाओं की सुरक्षा के लिए बनाए गए संवैधानिक प्रावधान का 
यहाँ पर मैं कुछ उल्लेख करना चाहूंगी कुछ आर्टिकल्स हैं जो कि भारतीय संविधान में जो स्त्रियों को लेके बाबा साहब ने वो लिखे हैं भारतीय संविधान के आर्टिकल 14 के अनुसार स्त्री और पुरुष में किसी प्रकार का लिंग भेद नहीं है तथा ये अधिकार स्त्री और पुरुष दोनों के समान रूप से प्राप्त है आर्टिकल 15 के अनुसार पुरुष और महिलाओं को समान अधिकार प्रदान किए गए हैं इतना ही नहीं इसी अनुच्छेद के खंड तीन में स्त्रियों के लिए विशेष व्यवस्था भी की गई है क्योंकि महिलाओं की स्वाभाविक प्रकृति के कारण उन्हें विशेष संरक्षण की आवश्यकता होती है आर्टिकल 19 में महिलाओं को स्वतंत्रता का अधिकार प्रदान किया गया है ताकि वे स्वतंत्र रूप से भारत के क्षेत्र में आवागमन निवास या व्यवसाय कर सकती हैं। आर्टिकल 23-24 में महिलाओं के विरुद्ध होने वाले शोषण को नारी गरिमा के लिए उचित नहीं मानते हुए महिलाओं की खरीद बिक्री वैश्यावृत्ति के लिए जबरदस्ती करना भीख मंगवाना आदि को दंडनीय माना गया है इसके लिए 1956 में भारतीय संसद द्वारा एक्ट पारित किया गया ताकि महिलाओं के विरुद्ध होने वाले सभी प्रकार के शोषण को समाप्त किया जा सके आर्थिक न्याय प्रदान करने हेतु अनुच्छेद आर्टिकल 29 में स्त्री को जीविका के पर्याप्त साधन प्राप्त करने का अधिकार एवं आर्टिकल 29 में समान कार्य के लिए समान वेतन का प्रावधान किया गया है आर्टिकल 42 के अनुसार महिला को विशेष प्रसूति अवकाश प्रदान करने की बात कही गई है आर्टिकल 46 इस बात का आह्वान करता है कि राज्य दुर्बल वर्गों के शिक्षा एवं अर्थ संबंधी हितों की विशेष सावधानी से अभिवृद्धि करेगा तथा सामाजिक अन्याय एवं सभी प्रकार के शोषण से संरक्षा करेगा संविधान के भाग चार के आर्टिकल 51 में स्पष्ट रूप से कहा गया है कि हमारा दायित्व है कि हम हमारी संस्कृति की गौरवशाली परंपरा को के महत्व को समझें और ऐसी प्रथाओं का त्याग करें जो स्त्रियों के सम्मान के खिलाफ हो आर्टिकल 243 में प्रत्येक पंचायत में कुल संख्या का वन बटा तीन स्त्रियों के लिए आरक्षित रहेंगे आर्टिकल 325 के अनुसार महिला एवं पुरुष को दोनों को समान रूप से मतदान में सम्मिलित होने का अधिकार प्रदान किया गया आर्टिकल 325 द्वारा संविधान निर्माताओं ने ये दर्शाने की कोशिश की कि भारत में पुरुष और स्त्री को समान मतदान अधिकार दिए गए हैं कुछ कानून हैं महिलाओं के प्रति बढ़ते अपराधों एवं अत्याचारों के निवारण के लिए राज्य द्वारा विभिन्न अधिनियम पारित किए गए ताकि महिलाओं को उनका अधिकार मिल सके एवं सामाजिक भेदभाव से उनकी सुरक्षा हो सके इंडियन पैनल कोड 1860 के प्रावधान महिलाओं पर होने वाले अत्याचार एवं निर्दयता के विरुद्ध व्यवस्था की गई है धारा 292 से 294 तहत विशिष्टता और सदाचार को प्रभावित करने वाले मामलों पर रोक लगाई गई है इसके अनुसार अगर कोई स्त्रियों की नंगी तस्वीरें प्रदर्शित करता है या उनको खरीदता या बेचता है अथवा भोंडा प्रदर्शन करता है तो ऐसे व्यक्ति को दो वर्ष तक की सजा एवं दो हजार रुपये तक जुर्माना अथवा दोनों ही सजाओं का प्रावधान है धारा थ्री ट्वेल्व से थ्री एटीन में गर्भपात करना आजन में शिशुओं को नुकसान पहुंचाने शिशुओं को आरक्षित छोड़ने और जन छिपाने के विषय में दंड का प्रावधान किया गया है धारा 354 के तहत अगर कोई व्यक्ति किसी स्त्री की लज्जा भंग करता है अथवा करने के उद्देश्य से आपराधिक बल प्रयोग करता है तो उसे दो वर्ष की सजा एवं जुर्माना अथवा दोनों से दंडित किए जाने का प्रावधान है धारा 361 के अनुसार यदि किसी महिला की आयु 18 वर्ष से कम है और उसे कोई व्यक्ति असहमति बिना या बहला अथवा फुसलाकर ले जाता है 
तो धारा 363 से 366 में दंड का प्रावधान किया गया है धारा 372 के तहत अगर किसी 18 वर्ष से कम आयु की महिला को किसी वैश्यावृत्ति के प्रयोजन के लिए बेचा जाने का दोषी पाया जाता है तो 10 वर्ष से कम की सजा और जुर्माना अथवा दोनों ही सजा दी जा सकती है धारा 375 में बलात्कार को परिभाषित किया गया है एवं धारा 376 में बलात्कार के लिए दंड का प्रावधान है धारा 498 अगर कोई पति अथवा कोई रिश्तेदार विवाहित पत्नी के साथ निर्दयता पूर्वक दुर्व्यवहार करता है अथवा दहेज को लेकर यात, यात्रा देता है तो न्यायालय उसे दो साल तक की सजा दे सकता है धारा 509 के तहत अगर कोई व्यक्ति स्त्री की लज्जा का अनादर करने के आश्रय से कोई शब्द कहता है कोई ध्वनि या कोई अंग विक्षेप करता है तो कोई या कोई वस्तु प्रदर्शित करता है अथवा कोई ऐसा कार्य करता है जिससे किसी स्त्री की एकांतता पर अतिक्रमण होता है तो ऐसे व्यक्ति एक वर्ष तक की सजा एवं जुर्माना अथवा दोनों से दंडित किया जाएगा बाबा साहब का मानना था कि हिंदू शास्त्रों का सहारा लेते हुए समस्त नारी जाति के साथ चाहे वे किसी भी वर्ण की हो अत्यधिक जुल्म किया गया है अतः हिंदू कोर्ट बिल लैंगिक भेदभाव पर आधारित पितृ सत्तात्मक ढांचे से निजात पाने का एक प्रयास है उनके लिए ये कार्य सरल ना होकर बेहद चुनौतीपूर्ण था अंबेडकर ने हिंदू कोर्ट बिल के माध्यम से जो प्रयास किए उनमें से कुछ बिंदुओं पर मैं यहाँ पे प्रकाश डालूंगी सजातीय विवाह की कट्टरता को लचीला बनाते हुए अंतर जातीय विवाह इंटरकास्ट मैरिजेस तथा उससे उत्पन्न संतान को मान्यता देना बहुपत्नीवाद पर निषेध लगाते हुए एक पत्नित्व को व्यवहार में लाना अन्यथा दोषी व्यक्ति दंड का भागी होगा तथा स्त्री को पति के द्वारा रखेल रखने पति के भयंकर रोग से पीड़ित होने नपुंसक होने एवं मानसिक और शारीरिक पीड़ा जैसी स्थितियों में विवाह विच्छेद की मान्यता दी गई है अंबेडकर जी का जो महिला को सशक्त बनाने का जो ये बलिदान है वो व्यर्थ नहीं गया और उनकी मृत्यु से लगभग पांच दिन पूर्व 17 जून 1956 में संपत्ति के अधिकार से जुड़े हिंदू उत्तराधिकार अधिनियम अधिनियम को पारित कर सरकार ने प्रगतिशील कदम जो उठाया किंतु लैंगिक समानता का को दंड किनार करते हुए इस तरह कहा जा सकता है कि अंबेडकर महिलाओं के हितों व उनके अधिकारों के प्रति एक ऐसे संवेदनशील योद्धा व प्रोधा हैं जिन्होंने स्त्री से जुड़े लगभग सभी क्षेत्रों शिक्षा विवाह पुनर्विवाह परिवार नियोजन संपत्ति आदि को अपने चिंतन का हिस्सा बनाकर नारी मुक्ति का आह्वान किया प्रसूति लाभ के मुद्दे पर 1928 में अंबेडकर ने आवाज बुलंद कर अपनी दूरदर्शिता का परिचय दिया उनके प्रथक अथक प्रयास से परिणाम स्वरूप ही सरकार को प्रसव प्रसुविधा अधिनियम 1961 पारित करना पड़ा जिसने रोजगार के लगभग सभी क्षेत्रों में महिलाओं के शोषण का अंत कर उनके सशक्तिकरण का मार्ग प्रशस्त किया इसी तरह अंबेडकर द्वारा पोषित संपत्ति के अधिकार में महिलाओं की हिस्सेदारी को मान्यता चाहे उस समय ना मिली लेकिन 2005 में संशोधित संपत्ति विधेयक के माध्यम से इसे वास्तविकता में बदल दिया गया इसके अतिरिक्त शिक्षा का अधिकार दो के तहत छह से चौदह वर्ष के बच्चों के लिए निःशुल्क एवं अनिवार्य शिक्षा को संविधान के भाग तीन का हिस्सा बनाकर सरकार स्वयं ही अपनी पीठ थपथपाती नहीं थकती है जबकि इसका बीजारोपण अंबेडकर जी ने ही किया था अंबेडकर ने महिलाओं से जुड़ी समस्याओं के प्रति जो भी समाधान रखे उन्हें एक एक करके भारतीय सरकार अपना कर अपनी उपलब्धियों में वृद्धि तो करती जा रही है लेकिन उनमें अंबेडकर निर्धारित है वास्तव में नारी मुक्ति का जो वर्तमान में महल खड़ा दिखाई देता है और भविष्य में जो भी महल बनेंगे उन, उसकी नींव ही नींव की ईट तो अंबेडकर ही हैं। ये विडंबना है कि भारतीय नारीवाद की आंदोलन अंबेडकर की अनदेखी कर यूरोप के नारीवादियों में आधार देखता है अंबेडकर ने 
जिस समता मूलक समाज की कल्पना की थी स्वतंत्रता के सात दशक बाद भी उसकी छवि धुंधली प्रतीत होती है दिन प्रतिदिन महिलाओं को बलात्कार यौन उत्पीड़न घरेलू हिंसा निर्धनता निरक्षकता जैसी समस्याओं से चूरना पड़ता है सामाजिक सुधार के अधूरे रह गए अंबेडकर के सपने और उनके विचारों का सही एवं प्रभावपूर्ण क्रियान्वयन किया जाए तभी नारी को समाज में उचित स्थान मिलेगा जिसकी जिसकी वह यथार्थ में पात्र है अंत में मैं यही कहना चाहूंगी कि शिक्षा के कारण ही वर्तमान स्त्री अपना फैसला करने में सक्षम है और स्वतंत्र भी है और इसका श्रेय जाता है महामानव मानवतावादी भारत रत्न बाबा साहब अम्बेडकर को उन्हीं के प्रयासों का परिणाम है कि आज की नारी सभी क्षेत्रों में अपना मुकाम हासिल कर रही है लेकिन उत्थान की यात्रा अभी भी जारी है क्योंकि बाबा साहब ने नारी उत्थान का सपना तभी पूरा होगा जब देश के सभी महिलाएं बिना किसी जाति लिंग धर्म के भेदभाव के समाज में सामाजिक आर्थिक राजनीतिक समानता स्वतंत्रता हासिल कर पाएंगी और यह नारी उत्थान की यात्रा जो बाबा साहब ने शुरू की थी अभी भी जारी है जो महिलाओं की भागीदारी के बिना अधूरी है बाबा साहब ने कहा था यूनिटी इज मीनिंगलेस विदाउट वुमेन एजुकेशन इज फ्रूटलेस विदाउट एजुकेटेड वुमेन एजुकेशन इज इनकम्प्लीट विदाउट स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ वुमेन अर्थात महिलाओं की भागीदारी के बिना कोई भी समाज ना तो तरक्की कर सकता है और ना ही विकास इसलिए महिलाओं के उत्थान की यात्रा तब तक जारी रहेगी जब तक कि प्रत्येक महिलाओं को समान अधिकार नहीं मिल जाते उनके खिलाफ हिंसक घटनाएं बंद नहीं हो, हो जाती और इसलिए महिलाओं को आगे आना ही पड़ेगा अंत में महिलाओं के लिए कुछ पंक्तियां संदेश रूप में कहकर अपनी वाणी को यहीं पे मैं विराम दूंगी तुम चुप रहकर जो सहती रही तुम चुप रहकर जो सहती रही तो क्या ये जमाना बदला है तुम बोलोगी खोलोगी अपने हक के लिए लड़ोगी तभी तो ये जमाना बदलेगा जय हिंद जय भी थैंक यू प्रोफेसर अनुला फॉर योर मेमोरेबल प्रेजेंटेशन it was very enlightening and engaging i sincerely agree with you and don't hesitate to call baba saheb stri masiha you are right stri cannot be uh, mukt without his rin nahi utar sakte unke rin and as you rightly said um, this society can only change if a woman is educated not only academically but socially and morally as well so ladies out there please educate all the women power in your house that you have uh, one day we hope to listen you in person not on zoom dr uh, dr anula it was a great presentation thank you now the forum is open for uh, question and answers for everyone uh, if anybody has uh, any question for our guest speakers please go ahead and uh, if you want to uh, type it in the chat box you are welcome to do that so thank you if you if you have any questions just lift the hand then we can unmute or you can unmute yourself because to avoid the you know multiple uh, duplicates any questions uh, can i ask yes vaishali go ahead please okay i have a question for professor uh, y s alone professor you had been talking about this uh, cultural sphere which was which was a very intriguing topic so when you talk to this intellectual people uh, you meet how is their reaction towards your thoughts because they are very very powerful uh, thoughts so please can you explain how do you face those questions when you uh, come across those 
I'll uh, I'll I'll just narrate two incidents. Uh, when I was making a presentation on visual arts in Mumbai, in one of the conference, and uh, there were people who were very very much Gandhians who were from Gujarat, and uh, they came out and they cornered me outside the hall and started asking questions. I said, uh, I love, I said, I also love Gujarat. I said, I studied in MS University, Baroda. And I said, it is so disheartening to see my university getting destroyed. And uh, then, then they said, how you will react if we also paint Ambedkar in a similar way, the way some people have painted Gandhi, which you have so shown. I said, these people have painted Gandhi very critically not out of hate, anger. I said, you also do it. I am, as an art historian, will study your caste perception as soon as this. So this is just one incident. The, the second incident, which uh, I've been saying those things, and it, it hits everyone, to be very frank. The, uh, for intellectual community, it is very difficult to digest their own critique. And it is a challenge. Uh, I always made this uh, open challenge that people say that they are working in theory, they are working in uh, contemporary theories. And I have always raised this fundamental question. Fine, if you are working in theories, you please tell me what theory you have produced. Because for me, theory and theorization are two different things. Producing a theory is something like producing a key in all, which has a universal application to analyze the phenomenon. Something like, say, uh, the uh, Pratyata Samutpad or something like Naya Vaisheshika logic or something like uh, uh, the Charvak logic or something like Marx base and superstructure. But I said, the uh, knowledge and power is not, a, uh, is not a theory, it is a critical framework. So there is a difference. So what you do is a theorization. And that theorization is thriving on derivation. So it is a reductive urge which thrives on derivation. So you are simply make, creating a derivative discourse, which absolutely has no relevance and it is not grounded with reality. Another important thing is that when you raise this critical question of critique of a self, they take a back seat because morally, ethically, they are not at all empowered to come forward and proclaim or say in a declarative sense that we subscribe to to, to, to the constitutional ethos and the righteous rationality. So this is this becomes very problem, pro problematic for them. And uh, at the same time, it is also equally important to understand the ways in which the knowledge production process is being practiced, whether it is America, whether it is Europe, whether it is India, whatever it is, wherever it is. There are a number of things that have been produced which absolutely has no relevance at all. So what you do, say for example, just give you a small example. This whole logic of post-colonial discourse, it is the biggest bakwas. To me, it is the biggest bakwas which has been produced by these claimed uh, diasporic intellectuals which absolutely has no relevance. And there are fundamental problems. The fundamental problem is that of how you uh, 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 how, how you how you understand. Say, say for example, I people make use of uh, uh, Gramscian idea of uh, uh, of subaltern. How do you define subaltern? Gramsci himself says that. Uh, those who are have, 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 have no access to power and resources are subaltern. And who are the people in India who have no access to power and resources? Even a, even a present movement is categorized as subaltern. 
whereas 90 more than 95 percent population present population in India are the followers of anti-Jepic. There is a new uh, uh, new survey which says that more than 25 percent of the Indian population for, believe in untouchability and follow untouchability. These are these are fundamental problems of the Indian society. So therefore, I said that this psychotic perversion is so much so much ingrained in the minds of the Indians that they cannot come out of. It. Therefore, you have to. I mean, it always hits them, but. But then you have to constantly, you know, keep hitting and make people conscious. So consciousness is very important. So our our job is to spread this consciousness and make people change, transform people. So 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 we believe in transformation. We don't believe in hate, anger, and violence. Uh, well, there is a long comment. Uh, uh, we says that how do we make Make Dr. Ambedkar a national hero of India, just like Gandhi. Dr. Ambedkar has been reduced to just a leader. Of, well, uh, this is a uh, uh, you know uh, uh, in in Marathi there is a textbook called Thoranchi Odak, and in that Thoranchi Odak, I think it is it is for third standard or fourth standard in Marathi. Uh, it says that the title you know. Uh, uh, something called. Um, um, Mulanche something Chacha Nehru, uh, then Thor Samar Suzar, great social reformer Mahatma Phule, Dalit Anche Kaiwari Baba Sahib Ambedkar. So, so this narrative needs to be changed, and and people have to understand recitation of preamble in India is more important in order to inculcate that constitutional morality and ethics. There is the the. the there is no people talk about morality and ethics but the, the the morality and ethics doesn't exist in india it's as simple as this i don't know whether it exists in canada us or anywhere you may have as a part of your democratic structure as a part of your democratic uh, ethos but certainly that is not sufficient enough because that ingrained head does not go because that ingrained hierarchy does not go and how do you transform those people and then moreover unless until you dismantle this gandhi you need to dismantle gandhi there is absolutely no relevance of that will the feminist in india or those people who are outside india those who praise gandhi would they subscribe that their daughter in law or their daughter they would not object their daughter or daughter in law sleeping with the Or uh, sleeping, sleeping naked with the uh, with the elderly person. What was being practiced by Gandhi? These are these are very important things, but we do not hate Gandhi. What we hate is the syndrome, and that syndrome is a perversion. It's not a righteous syndrome. It is not a righteous rationality. and therefore gandhi is a fantastic example of protected ignorance if the europeans and americans wish to wish to live in the perennial protected ignorance and celebrating gandhi syndrome it is their problem it is not our problem it cannot be our problem and we have to work constantly how you narrate ambedkar how you how you tell these children ambedkar how do you how do you how you how do you analyze ambit as a part of history we have to teach people that he was the first one to present the dis, the, the critic of three discourses and critic of discourses is possible only by taking up some philosophical position without that i mean he did not criticize for the sake of criticism let me tell you the first critic of uh, likes of uh, savarkar and all uh, gandhi and all these people Was was made by Dr. Ambedkar. No, no, any other person really dared to do that, which today everybody is if, if, uh, wish to wish to corner that. Or even for that matter, in Marathi, the first critic of RSS was produced by uh, Rao Sahib Kasbe. That is Zoth, the fantastic book on RSS. See that kind of a critical. We need to teach our children this kind of a critical. and think differently and 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 narrate ambedkar very differently
uh, then the next is uh, well it's a very long comment uh, the, I, have, I have one question sorry professor yeah. thank you very much for that i have one question for professor anula maurya uh, actually you mentioned rightly mentioned about the you know the the dominant caste feminist it the, so it could be related to uh, professor anula maurya uh, ma'am like did you face any kind of you know the uh, humiliation or uh, any any backlash from this uh, so called you know the feminist like you know the mainstream feminist the dominant caste feminist in your uh, you know in your whenever like you are giving the any uh, lectures or uh, when you are encountering them like can you can you explain a little bit about your experiences on that आपने बहुत सही प्रश्न किया आज अगर मैं वाइस चांसलर हूँ संस्कृत यूनिवर्सिटी की तो जो बीच का जो सफर रहा है वो इतना आसान नहीं था एक दलित औरत और वो भी संस्कृत यूनिवर्सिटी में वाइस चांसलर होना बहुत बड़ी बात है और ऐसा नहीं है कि दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी में ह्यूमलेशन तो इस तरह से नहीं हुआ ना मेरे प्रोफेशन में इस तरह से हुआ लेकिन जो आदमी की जो मानसिकता है जो मैंने अपने जीवन में देखी है चाहे वो टीचिंग प्रोफेशन में थी अगर कोई इस तरह की कुछ करता भी था तो मैं बहुत सक्षम थी उसको झेलने के लिए उसको जवाब देने के लिए और मैं सब महिलाओं से यही कहूंगी कि आप अगर किसी के साथ गलत नहीं कर रहे हो तो किसी की गलत बात को भी बर्दाश्त नहीं करो अगर एक बार आपने उस गलती को सहन कर लिया तो वो गलतियां बार बार होती रहेंगी इसलिए पहली बार में ही अगर आपका कोई रिमुलेशन करता है आपको कोई दबाने की कोशिश करता है तो उसी समय अपनी आवाज उठानी चाहिए ग्रेट थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर दट यू नो Uh, your experience and you know encouraging the other Dalit women to be stand for against this justice. One, well, I have one more question here. I can see for uh, Professor Elon. It is asked by Ames Canada. Question for the Dr. Elon. Okay, loud your thoughts uh, and examples on the protected ignorance. How do we make Dr. Ambedkar a national hero of India, just like Gandhi? Dr. Ambedkar has been reduced to just a leader of Dalits, but truly he was a. Oh, I cannot see that. Yeah, so basically, it's asking like, how can we make the Dr. Ambedkar as a national leader for all the sections, not only for only Dalits? And, well, that's a narrative we would we need to change. This is this narrative is constantly inscribed in the public sphere that for oh, Dalit okay, neta the, or he worked only for Dalits and all. That's that's not correct. The if you even see the Indian Constitution, five people are very important: Dr. Ambedkar, Nehru, uh, Sardar Patel, uh, uh, and Zakir uh, Hussain. Um, uh, uh so so these are uh, these are all the uh, very uh, important people who have really played a played a dominant role in making of the constitution but at the same time how dr ambedkar made certain things made certain changes and uh, so so this narrative needs to be told to the public yeah that's true when it comes to say for example in the subcommittee Uh, of uh, uh, franchise dr ambedkar had proposed that it should be made a fundamental right and sardar patel said no let the constituent assembly decides and dr ambedkar made it very clearly that no without we propose the constituent assembly will not take it up and therefore so franchise could not become fundamental right uh, in india and today we are facing lot of problems what are the problems like your name is not there in the voting list that you don't know whom you are voting by pressing a button of a machine so if you make it as fundamental right apuru sahib pachpan to jam so by making it as a fundamental right then certainly you will uh, you can uh, you can address those issues very quickly and 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 not only that 
uh, when when Gandhi was asked why you oppose the separate electorate when you agree for Muslims. So, so it, this is very beautifully explained in in Rashikar Mundru's book, uh, which which says that like Gandhi says that. Uh, the, the the scheduled caste will align with Muslims and will butcher caste Hindus. This is what he remarks. So you have to understand the great figure of nonviolence, how was so much afraid and creating a violence by 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 opposing the opposing to the separate electorate. And even great Tagore, who is champion of humanism, so I don't know where his humanism had gone. He came down from Kolkata to Mumbai by, by that uh, Howrah mail and went to Pune in support of, 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 of Gandhi's fast unto death. So there are a number of these kind of narratives, but we have to tell everything. It's not that we are critiquing or we are distinct. We are, we, we, we are not the kind of a people who would not like to acknowledge others' contribution. No, we do acknowledge all others' contribution. But at the same time, like what Dr. Ambedkar said, that return to antiquity is all about Gandhism. And we don't want that return to antiquity. We want to go forward. We want to progress. We want that transformation. And, and therefore, we need to narrate the narrative of Ambedkar in a different manner. Every time everybody says, oh, no, no, aisa kiya, aisa kiya, ye kiya, wo kiya. but as long as you do not make it, you know, make it more contemporary, see how uh, uh, Baba has provide certain solutions to certain problems, and then and and then and then move, move, move on. How do you present a critique of the economics? How do you present a critique of the social? How do you present a critique of the uh, uh, of, uh, of of culture from the Ambedkarian perspective? So these are the kind of perspectives which we need to develop at large and make it make it as a public project. Uh, so so that so that all these kind of inhibitions which exist against Dr. Ambedkar are the the kind of a uh, uh, these are all the things that have been nurtured all the time. So this nurturing has been done by the by the all the political dispensations in the country. That is why I say that politics in India is Ambedkar and anti-Ambedkar. Ambedkar for transformation and anti-Ambedkar are the status quo. I'm not talking about political parties. Don't misunderstand me. I'm talking about the politics as such. The politics as such is Ambedkar and anti-Ambedkar. And what is important for us is to develop and be big, I mean, make more people conscious about this Ambedkarian politic, uh, political project, uh, where the transformation is important, where equality is important, where we, we, we face day-to-day -day problems and those day-to-day -day problems can be taken care of by, by, by changing our cultural mindset, creating a respect for everyone. That is, that is essential in order to bring change in the society. That is still a larger, large syndrome in India. The, 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 uh, the matrimonial columns still have those uh, uh, categorizations and the so-called educated and cosmopolitan, they will say ACST excuse. What kind of a cosmopolitan it is? We have to present a critic of their modernity. We have to present this cosmetic modernity, this Brahmanic modernity. The modernity in India is a Brahmanic modernity. It is a cosmetic modernity. It has never been a modernity in a real sense of the term or in a real spirit. That spirited modernity gets advocated only by Dr. Ambedkar and not by Gandhi or any other person for that matter. Why, why, why Pakistan celebrates its independence day on 14th of August? We celebrate our independence day on 15th of August. What is the logic? Because the, because the Pandit saw the Panchang and advised Nehru to choose 15th August for his coronation as a prime minister of the country. So you are governed by the Panchang. You, you shoot the satellite by seeing the panchan. These are the kind of a mentality we have. And we have to 
come out of those mental and therefore we need to narrate people we need to change the consciousness of people and and this is possible by collective uh, efforts by collective work not by just the, not not by just one person or two person and at the same time it is equally important outside outside india we we we, we inscribe this narrative in the public sphere the uh, likes of akil bilgrami who has a love for gandhi i don't understand why he does not see those contradictions he failed to see these contradictions there are number of contradictions and nobody wishes to address those contradictions shame on them they 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 all are are are, are with a with a with a kalushit buddhi jo hai kehte na wo us type ka hai so we have to come out of it and we have to make it more more human more uh, critical it's not that ambedkar I, i'm not saying that ambedkar did not make mistakes or anything yes he might have done mistakes no doubt about that we accept yes fine we don't have any problems but do you do you also point out mistakes of others you are so much interested to point out mistakes of ambedkar but why do you do not take a pain and point out those mistakes of others in a similar way in a similar fashion let there be equality even in the critique perfectly fine with us absolutely no problem so that should be the kind of a mindset we need to inculcate thank you brother vijay can i ask yeah you? thank you uh, there is one more question from shafi ccmi brother shafi can you go ahead uh, are you able to hear me yes we can hear you okay uh, uh, first of all thank you for uh, organizing this all the organizations uh, you know it's an enlightening session i'm glad i joined um i have a, a question for uh, prof sir alone alone and i i come from tamil nadu so i learned all the ideologies of uh, equality and social justice from from the ideologies of periyar so for me it is, it is not only easy to call uh, uh, bala saheb ambedkar as my leader but uh, because you know if if i know periyar accepted him as a leader Uh, probably he's the only person periyar accepted as as a leader um, <clears throat> and uh, also coming to gandhi that's where my question lies so even day before yesterday there was a tweet which got trended uh, there was this lady asking you know by the way what is what's happening in india uh, do you think they are going to replace gandhi with god say in the currency notes of india so i i replied to that tweet saying that they will not do it because it's not just the international perception that will be impacted but because these people actually like gandhi i told i told that lady that godse was once a fan boy of gandhi however sir my question is with today's india will that will it become counterproductive to to criticize gandhi considering that uh, the hindutva group is also you know uh, considering gandhi's enemy some of them at least uh, at least the people who don't understand everything about gandhi because they are all they are all watching for god say more well uh, gandhi was an icon of hindutva if you read gandhi very carefully uh, he believes in jati dharma he believed in 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 the uh, in the chaturvarna he believed in jati dharma he believed the, the 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 believed in ritualistic practices and gandhi himself has written about it so there is no doubt about that the only thing which people talk about gandhi is the secularism uh, but but that is also very cosmetic in the if if we raise this particular question why 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 gandhi ji did not uh, go fast and to death Uh, when the communal riots were happening in india so so there, there is there is no any move on part of gandhi to stop that and and he him, and we have a photograph photographic evidence in veraiwala's book that he raised hand for the partition of india so you you have to bring that history and 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 as far as these counter productive things are concerned you know gandhi was all the time very hinduized and and concerned only with with with, with hinduness 
he was not his, his his nine violence comes from tolstoy and not from buddha as simple as this and and there are number of number of things i mean he changed his stance at the same time there no doubt about that that he changed his stance but but we do not celebrate godse we will never celebrate godse as simple as this we will never support any killing and one should one should keep in mind that the 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 uh, it it is this it is this gandhi syndrome that has been transformed into the present day uh, uh expression of 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 uh, violence and, and 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 militant behavior of the hegemonic group had there been a gandhi ethics in india there would not have been violence the society would not have become violent the gandhi ethics exist in india and therefore there is a violence in india and i can give you number of examples right right from my childhood what i have observed say for example if you if you are talking about the the latest latest take the example of the muslim question ambedkar made it very clear that no there should not be tolerance to the violence on the women and if the religious communities are not are not coming forward then the the parliament of india has every right to enact laws for the protection of the women forget about your personal laws this is a provision made in the constitution which is a sole brain brain child of dr ambedkar how much it has been followed and why it is not being followed and why yet even after 75 years of the independence we have not been able to formulate common civil code and what are the reasons the 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 act of violence by the dominant group has always played havoc on the minorities and the minorities also all kinds of minorities not just muslim minorities the christian minority the buddhist minority is the, the, the scheduled caste the scheduled tribe minorities they need to understand the politics of hegemony and the politics of governance the politics of governance is very important why because we are for the constitutional solution and not take a gun and and kill anyone that is not our way uh, ambedkar never advocated it he never advocated it and that is the reason that education becomes important for 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 each of us that is the reason bringing a a good cultural mindset healthy cultural mindset is my mindset is important there are i can give you number of numerical examples for that and 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 therefore what what the ambedkarites are critiquing is the gandhi syndrome because the gandhi syndrome is all about caste hinduness that is the reason why why there are why 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 there is no uh, 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 like uh, you know uh, uh, the the word the, the very advocacy advocacy of word harijan which which the ambedkarites have completely rejected we are not sons of bastard come on we are sons of our mother and father we are not sons of bastard we are not harijans or even for that matter one of my friend dr uma khan had divided the uh, the acst communities into four categories he says that there is there are four four, four people four, four kinds of people one is ambedkarite who really wish to change or bring transformation in the society be it is from any religion or anything second is the son in law of the government 
कि वेर देर इज अ रिजर्व पोजिशन सो यू अटैच द कास्ट सर्टिफिकेट बाकी तेल लेने जाए सोसाइटी भाड़ में जाए एंड द थर्ड इज हरिजन हु लिव ऑन द मर्सी ऑफ अदर्स एंड द फोर्थ इज अ बुट लिटर ही कॉल्स इट एज भड़वा सो देर आर देर देर इज दिस फैंटेस्टिक कैटेगराइजेशन एंड अंबेडकर दिस इज अ क्रिटिक ऑफ अ सेल्फ लेट लेट द ब्राह्मीन कम्युनिटीज द कास्ट हिंदू कम्युनिटीज कम विद दिस क्रिटिक ऑफ अ सेल्फ the ajlaf the aslaf and and lot of lot of those 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 uh, those stratifications which exist in the muslim society they also come forward without addressing the problems how you can solve the problems you need to address this problem you cannot keep it as uh, something which is no 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 ye hamara problem nahi hai no it is not like that it is a problem of people and we have to address it and we have constitutional means to address it. so the gandhian gandhian thinking will never create equality as simple as this it will always be like when you have to uh, conform to your jati dharma that means what my ancestors have been doing so so according to gandhi you can have education but your jati dharma will be supreme one will be paramount one that means even if you become an engineer and if you are a son of a safai karmachari then you are Uh, you have to do only safai karma hai you may have education of him <coughs> so the engineering education will not be means of your uh, your employment it is your jati dharma which will be means of employment which ambedkar completely rejected we don't want that kind of a thing and, and 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 that is why people are critical about that and 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 i don't see any problems in it. absolutely no problem in it but we are also critical of god say we don't subscribe to killing that is nonsense i think that was the most dastardly incident that happened in uh, modern india in 18th century india let you know in in political sphere monsters are difficult to kill in the political democracy once you create a monster in the political democracy it is very difficult to kill today you feel oh this is happening in india it is how it is i mean i we have been seeing those things right from our childhood what is so great about it? what is so great about it we have we we are facing that problem we have been facing that problem we have been seeing that and we have been telling people but people were not interested to listen at all and when today their rights are being infringed today when they are being attacked so now there is i mean they they have come out of their slumber because of the attack how 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 stupid it is and we have to fight collectively this is this these are the ways forward it's not that there is no way forward but these are the ways forward make people more conscious conscious if with the consciousness people demand employment people demand good society people demand good things the political parties will have to do that it's all your political consciousness that matters a lot in india and we are not a political um, conscious society we our voting in india is always emotive it is never a conscious voting it is very emotive every political party has dedicated uh, andabhak blind followers they are totally andabhak everywhere be it, take any example i can you you just take any example any leader and you will find the army of uh, uh, line followers so we have to change that if the is officer at least works implement even if he impl he or she implements 50% of the government policies lot of things will be taken care of you will you will get read of this chutka chutputa leaders and all those things it is as simple as this so so we need to change number of things we need to change our police laws we need to change there are 480 laws which have been identified by law commission which are redundant which 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 are not required at all but there is a problem in 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 uh, uh, getting getting read of those laws the government is interested if by doing it by by ordinance whereas the some of the member of parliaments are demanding it should be done by the act of parliament 
you have to understand the process through ordinance you can bring back those laws again but with the act of parliament you cannot bring the bring back again because if you want to bring it back you have to get it passed in the parliament again so these are some of the important procedural things which are very necessary we have judicial account bill we have number of those things which are very important and 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 justice de justice uh, delayed is justice denied you in democracy justice is very important if there is no justice the democracy will never survive thank you professor alun for your very detailed explanation i hope uh, shafiq that answered your question uh, if anybody else have any question uh, please feel free to ask make it short we are running out of time too so please arun ji has a question here unmute yourself and go ahead mera sawal jo hai professor anula maurya se hai unki apne college mein aur university mein dalit bahujan vidyarthiyon ki kya kya mushkilein thi kya kya mushkilein unhone ka samna kiya और एज ए प्रिंसिपल और एज ए वाइस चांसलर अपने कॉलेज और यूनिवर्सिटी में आने के बाद में इन्होंने कैसे उनके मुश्किलों का निदान किया देखिए जब मैं कॉलेज में थी तो एस सी सेल मैंने बनवाया वहां पे और उसमें जो बच्चों की परेशानियां थी वो उनको दूर किया लेकिन जब मैं यूनिवर्सिटी में आई एज वाइस चांसलर तो वहां पे कोई रोस्टर नहीं था एस सी के लिए कोई ऐसा विंग नहीं था कुछ भी नहीं था जाते ही मैंने रोस्टर बनवाया और एडमिशंस में भी आप ये देखिए कि जनरल कैटेगरी के बच्चे एडमिशन लेते थे और अगर रिजर्व कैटेगरी के कोई होता होगा तो उसको इनकार कर दिया जाता होगा तो मैंने एडमिशंस में भी रोस्टर बनाया काफी बोलते रहे ये पंडित लोग जो वहां पे थे यूनिवर्सिटी में कि नहीं रोस्टर वोस्टर नहीं हम तो एक प्रोस्पेक्टस में दे देते हैं ये रिजर्व कैटेगरी के जो हैं वो आके ले लेंगे मैंने कहा नहीं मैंने रोस्टर बनवाया टीचिंग में भी बनवाया नॉन टीचिंग में भी बनवाया और वहां पे एडमिशंस में भी बनवाया और अब देखिए जो अपॉइंटमेंट्स होंगे उसमें एक भी हमारे यहाँ एस टीचर नहीं है एस सी कोई भी टीचर नहीं है ओबीसी का एक टीचर है बस तो रोस्टर को ये फॉलो नहीं कर रहे थे रिजर्वेशन को ये फॉलो नहीं कर रहे थे तो मैंने जाके वो यूनिवर्सिटी में किया है और जब तक मैं रहूंगी मेरे यही प्रयास रहेगा कि जो रिजर्व कैटेगरी की सीट्स हैं वो भरें एक्सीलेंट थैंक यू प्रोफेसर अनुला बाबा साहब सही कहते थे शिक्षण वाघिनी से दूध है पीला और गुरावल्या शिवा रहना नहीं मीन्स वो शेरनी का दूध है अगर आप लेते हो तो आप दहाड़े बिना रहोगे नहीं वी नीड मोर शेरनीज लाइक यू इन इंडिया टू रिप्रेजेंट आर दलित वुमेन एंड हेल्पलेस वुमेन दे थैंक यू फॉर व्हाट यू आर डूइंग हाई थैंक यू सो मच फॉर एनी टाइम वी आर प्राउड ऑफ यू सो इफ नो बडी हेल्स एनी क्वेश्चन Uh, we would finally like to invite Mr. Elangwan Anamali for his vote of thanks. Thank you. Mr. Elangwan. With myself, yes, please. Yeah. Yes. Jai Bhim Ji, Jai Bhim. I think it's been really a, one of my um, kind of uh, very important day today. We had a really intellectual speeches by eminent, eminent uh, speakers. Uh, given a kind of new dimension to Baba Sam Bedkar's, uh, both from intellectual perspective as well as from women's perspective. Uh, first and foremost thing uh, today, uh, April 23rd is, uh, is a World Books Day, as we all know. And it's always a pleasure to say, I always say the book, uh, Baba Sam Bedkar is synonymous with books. The, probably the person who spent almost 18 plus hours a day on reading books and having a personal library of 50,000 plus books, I think. So it's a wonderful thing to have uh, about our celebration on this very important day. And uh, I, firstly, I would like to thank uh, Bantaji, uh, Dr. Chandrakirti ji for uh, the recitation of the Trishashan Panchil. And it's really very nice of you, uh, Bantaji. And I would like to 
um, thank uh, our consulate, Mrs. Purva Chivastav, uh, for giving us the uh, speech on this Babas Ambedkar's Jayanti. And he, uh, in fact, highlighted Babas of how patriotic he was and, and uh, what he, how he fought for the unity and uh, strong India. And uh, he's sort of a holistic and uh, inclusive India. So he was a visionary and also looking for the strong democracy. And uh, he also, she also mentioned about uh, the uh, Bausa being a crusader of gender justice and equality, which is true. And um, uh, then I would like to thank uh, Professor Dr. Lowen, uh, I think for his very intellectual speech. And I really, be, really enjoyed every, every part of your speech. Uh, so intellectual and very difficult, really, you know, follow it because it's, um, it's a flow is wonderful. And uh, you, you touched it and started off with uh, referencing to uh, Mahatma Jyotira Fuli and uh, Panjit Ayodhya Dasa. Thanks for it. I think Panjit Ayodhya Dasa, you know that uh, from Tamil Nadu, because you know the pioneer uh, of his uh, driving movement and the uh, the inter equality for all people and uh, of course then uh, the uh, important key, key notes or key uh, uh, kinds i would like to take it up from him is the uh, uh, so called this uh, protected intellectual intellectual uh, syndrome and the gandhian syndrome this is very protectual ignorance sorry protected ignorance and gandhian syndrome these two terms are really fantastic. Uh, first time I'm hearing, and then uh, I, I make sure that uh, I use the term uh, as much as possible. It's a, it's a it's a new term to all of us. It's really, uh, especially the the protector ignorance is a, is a fantastic term. How the intellectual people are really protected, uh, knowingly uh, it is uh, it's incorrect actually. So otherwise, um, how could somebody think like you know we had invented. Uh, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, this technology of uh, interplanetary things and then plastic surgeries and all that on a, on a science forum, uh, you people <laughs> could could not really talk unless you really uh, kind of uh, so much of ignorance of uh, intellectuality. And uh, he, of course, um, he had quoted about Bowsop's uh, nice sayings of uh, life of contradiction, which Bowsop rightly said. Uh, when we when he said on this on the 26th of January how he's going to get into life into contradictions and uh, he also said about uh, how he was a critic of western culture and the brahminical positions and he was really a critic of uh, communisms uh, that is true actually and um, he talked about uh, the how these achievements in tough in tough the uh, the uh, fantastic labor supply which is india's done and also, also this uh, mythological culture. And this is a fantastic uh, term that is right, rightly uh, um, tell us and for one that uh, it's important thing we, we really need to uh, make note of. And how Ambedkar uh, cultures and medical thoughts would be against this, how we can break the nomadic culture uh, is uh, how is important for uh, such changes. And uh, he is, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, how, I mean, in fact, uh, in the, some of the quotes, uh, example he gave for the protected culturism is the COVID, uh, you know, how people reacted and how they ignorantly believed in uh, beating the utensils and, you know, candles, writing candles and all the stuff. And Walt Waldo was uh, talking about in a, in, a, in a more practical sense, we're all singing song uh, like a go away, Corona, go away, Corona, this kind of mountains we are doing. I mean, really, it's a very, uh, very unfortunate. It's called, come from so-called the uh, ruling people. Uh, in that sense, uh, whether it's uh, the highest intellectual or the lowest person, there's no really difference. They all do the same kind of uh, nonsense. And um, how you're talking about the enabler process, uh, righteousness, culture <laughs> of defamations, I mean, I can keep on telling, I, mean, I don't want to repeat the whole thing. Uh, and um, it's uh, it's like uh, how it is important. Uh, one key point uh, he touched on is this, Karuna, how is important? Uh, karuna is important, which lead to fraternity. Without fraternity, uh, equalities cannot be achieved. The foundation of fundamental uh, part is Karuna, which is the basic British philosophy. Uh, that's one of the reasons why Baba Sambedkar adopted Buddhism. So. It's a, it's a great point uh, about how uh, you know the the Russian revolution, French revolutions are different from the uh, the Buddhist thought because the Buddhist philosophy is basically based on the Karuna. That's that's very good of you, Professor. 
And um, uh, I don't know, end of the day, I think uh, what is important, the constitution ethos, which you rightly said, Professor, and I hope uh, I capture most of the point. Uh, when I come to uh, the next keynote speaker, uh, again, uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Professor. That's really uh, nice of you. And I would like to have more such uh, speeches and uh, lectures. Uh, please feel free uh, to share your kind of uh, uh, programs. Uh, we probably like to, uh, at least from my side, I just want to hear more of your speeches to enlighten myself, uh, Professor, actually. Uh, Madam, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, it's really uh, talk to when it comes to the uh, Madam uh, Anulia Moriaji. And I really don't, I mean, I, only thing I want to say is at one time, uh, Sanskrit for that matter uh, was not even allowed by uh, to read by the by the Shudras, especially leave alone the uh, Panjamas and they were not even uh, allowed to read. And, you know, I heard that your the tongues will be cut off and molten uh, iron will be just poured onto your ears and th things like that. And then today you are a professor, vice chancellor of this very Sanskrit university. I was told that Baba Sambedkar, where there was no Brahmin willing to teach him Sanskrit. He had to go to uh, Germany to learn uh, Germany. Through Germany, he was learning Sanskrit. And then you ended up becoming a vice chancellor. Uh, I think you really made uh, Baba Sahib's dream come through not only as a woman force and also the breaking the uh, kind of very um, strong force. It is really, uh, thank you, Madam G. I think I only uh, wish to hear more from your speeches. I have to say uh, with, my, with my humbleness, uh, um, I'm sorry, I, I don't have uh, much knowledge in Hindi, sorry. I, I, don't, I didn't quite understand uh, your speech, but uh, I vaguely, I, what I could understand was how important uh, uh, the progress of uh, women spoke. As you rightly said, unity is uh, uh, meaningless without the accomplishment of women. I mean, accomplishment of the of women. That is, Baba Sambedkar's quote is very correct. And uh, when Baba Sambedkar also said that, uh, I measure the progress of the community yeah. by the oh, degree yeah. uh, the uh, the prosperity of the women I achieved. I'm sure that without the kind of uh, uh, the women, um, uh, there is nothing can be achieved. You also rightly said, uh, in a family, if a man uh, kind of educated, he only alone educated. If a woman is educated, whole family is educated. When the whole family is educated, whole you know whole whole community, whole nation is educated. So we really, uh, I mean, you see, we, go, we we still have to go a long way uh, to make our uh, uh, dream come true. You have touched on the women's role uh, from the days of Vedas and how it is uh, kind of a Buddha's teachings, and uh, how how it's important to bring back bring back the uh, rights of the to the women. And you also talked about uh, Ambedkar's role against, uh, you know, the kind of manuscript manuscripti. And you also uh, said that education is the only tool for women liberation. You rightly said that. Uh, I mean, without education, obviously, uh, women will remain only a kind of a kind of a ornamental uh, figures. You know, if you, even if you look at movies. And how many movies really put a, uh, uh, you know, kind of a women as a kind of lead role? They just show him as a, you know, use them for some, simply as a, as a kind of a glamour role. And that's still, uh, I mean, even there also, there is no equality. I mean, there's hardly anybody who could say. And uh, you rightly said, ma'am, I think education is not just the degree education, the social education is equally important, which you really rightly said that. Um, and... Uh, yeah, and then, uh, okay, uh, okay, you also really um, mentioned about a low percentage of literacy among women, and I'm sure that uh, we really had to work on uh, to make it uh, more and more. We had to educate our own family members, like you also said that, we had to start at home, like giving equality and uh, uh, kind of to the women folks, which is really true. We can't be going on talking about uh, women's rights and equality without even giving the same to our own women folks, which is correctly said. And uh, in the end, I think you also mentioned how Baba Sambedkar is, uh, you know, start up the Hindu court bill, how you're finding it difficult and uh, what was his uh, role in giving equality to the, uh, the women folks. And in the end, I think you, you also mentioned uh, lots of uh, you know, articles in, in the constitution you've really understood. Like uh, Baba Sambedkar's uh, articles 12, of course, talked about equality, mentioned about 14, 19, 23, 24, 24, and so many other uh, safeguards. And uh, you're right. I mean, you can have a lot of uh, spiritual speeches. By the end of the day, what is important is uh, the uh, constitution protections, which is very, very important. And uh, you have rightly touched on that. 
and uh, well i think your your point in the end is education only tool we can uh, get a pre independence in our spheres that is the kind of uh, kind of you you closed it with a, a nice remarks that uh, i also uh, like to kind of acknowledge that like that's the only way i could uh, probably uh, like to acknowledge that in the end i would also like to uh, thank uh, you know in addition to that the the keynote speaker and guest speakers and uh, i would like to thank uh, professor uh, gautam ji uh, i think uh, arun gautam he was the one who was probably is taking a lot of pain in uh, getting this program out uh, not only contacting the you know wonderful speakers and uh, uh, like yourself and uh, professor loy and then also the kind of he taken a lot of pain in kind of a streaming line and uh, he is constantly uh, kind of having us in the meeting and to making sure the program uh, come through it is actually very nice timing so guys is very good like 3 4 hours is normally a, a good time 2 to 3 hours which is kindly really good and uh, i like to thank uh, uh, the our host um, uh, mr vaishali ji and uh, vijay pule ji for really taking us the program very nicely and then uh, which is kind of a tot thank you very much and uh, and uh, in the end i would like to try like to uh, thank the uh, our various organizations who are involved in uh, making this program come through firstly dr ambedkar intellectual uh, international mission toronto and uh, ambedkar Interna um, international mission society calgary and ambedkar international coordinating society golden uh, dama waves we have south asian dalit adivasi network canada we have uh, uh, sri ravi, ravi gurudas uh, society calgary and we have chetna association of canada and we also have our uh, brothers the canadian council of indian muslims we all thank all their uh, kind of a continuous support to to have this wonderful program and uh, well, but not uh, last but not the least all those wonderful participants without the participants uh, uh, the the no program exists actually so i would i see this time we have 50 plus uh, uh, participant on this uh, event and also we have the live telecast of the facebook which is also have a good number of viewings and uh, thank you very much uh, once again and uh, uh, thanks for it thanks bye bye jai bhi uh, thank you all for joining have a great day jai bhi namo buddhaye bye bye